Dr. Sharita Golden, Vice President and Chief Diversity Officer for Johns Hopkins Medicine. We created this educational series for you on the COVID-19 vaccine because we want you, our employees, to be able to make the most informed decisions for yourself. We have gathered experts across our organization to contribute to this video series, and we welcome you to watch either the entire series or just those components that are most relevant to you. Thank you. COVID-19 has had a truly devastating impact around the world with over 69 million infections and over 1.5 million deaths. The impact of COVID-19 has been particularly bad here in the United States. As of today, over 15 million people in the United States have had COVID-19 and almost 300,000 people have died from this virus. Both the total number of COVID-19 cases and the number of COVID-19 deaths here in the US have been higher than in any other country across the world. More concerning is that the COVID pandemic in the US has actually been getting worse over time. As seen in this figure, also the number of new COVID-19 cases in the US occurring each day has just surged tremendously since September. In the last several weeks, we've seen the highest number of COVID-19 cases than at any other time since the pandemic began, with up to 200,000 cases occurring every single day. Right now, we're also seeing the highest number of deaths per day in the US, with approximately 3,000 people dying every day. That's the equivalent of more than four planes full of people crashing into the ground every single day. As bad as these numbers are, they still cannot fully capture the immeasurable suffering and disruption that COVID-19 has brought across so many aspects of our lives and the horrible impact of COVID-19 across all communities has been just truly heart-wrenching. What has been particularly devastating has been the disproportionate impact of this virus on those who have been historically the most vulnerable to poor health in our society particularly this, the Black community and other communities of color who have been hit very hard by this disease. Rates of COVID-19 cases in the Black community have been about 1.5 times higher than seen in the white non-Hispanic population. Worse yet, not only has there been significantly more COVID-19 disease happening in the Black community, but African-Americans with COVID-19 have been much more likely to have really bad or severe cases of COVID-19. Uh, in hospitalization data from the Census for Disease Control and Prevention, looking across multiple states, including Maryland, African-Americans have been about four times more likely to end up in the hospital due to COVID-19 infection. African-Americans also have been three times more likely to die due to COVID-19. So why has the toll of COVID-19 been so particularly devastating for the Black community? Several factors that likely contribute to the severe disparate impact of COVID-19 in this community are shown here. These include African-Americans being on the front lines in essential services, African-Americans having higher rates of underlying health conditions that can lead to more severe COVID-19 disease, and African-Americans having long-standing societal disparities that have led to our failing to achieving health equity for the Black community. Namely, as defined here, our failing to achieve the state in which everyone has the opportunity to attain their full health potential and no one is dis disadvantaged from achieving this potential because of their social position or any other socially defined circumstance. For the Black community, these disparities have long existed across income, employment, housing, food security, education, incarceration, and access to health systems and services. Digging deeper into the first point, African-Americans have been more likely to be in the jobs or on the front line of this pandemic that have been essential to the continued functioning of our society. These include jobs that provide key essential services, whether it be in the food service industry to ensure that we all still have food to eat, in the transportation industry, critical to our getting from place to place to meet our life needs, in security and environmental management services, 
ensuring that we all have an environment that is safe or in other key parts of our healthcare space, essential to our receiving the care critical to maintaining our health and bringing us back to good health when we are sick. These positions have been crucial to keeping us all going and allowing us all to survive during this pandemic. Yet, being in jobs on the front lines of this pandemic definitely brings an increased risk for being exposed to and getting infected with the COVID-19 virus. We also know that even before the pandemic, African-Americans were less likely to be in jobs that would allow being able to work from home. So the current risk was set up long before COVID-19 came to be. African-Americans also have higher rates of diabetes, high blood pressure, stroke, chronic kidney disease, obesity, and other underlying health conditions. These underlying conditions have been associated with, with much more severe COVID-19 disease and associated with a higher risk of both hospitalization and death. This pandemic has also shone a bright spotlight on longstanding multi-generational disparities that continue to lead to disparities in health for the Black community in the specific context of COVID. Multiple of these longstanding disparities likely have laid the foundation for what has been the disproportionately worst impact of COVID-19 on the Black community. These include disparities in living conditions, health insurance, income and wealth, and access to health systems and health services. So how do we move forward in addressing the disparate impact of COVID-19 on the Black community? As we look to the months ahead, I think it's so important for us to know where we have been, where we are, and where we hope to be. Appreciating the devastation that COVID-19 has left in its path, it's going to be so important for us to use every single tool available to us in our fight against future loss of health and life due to COVID-19. In this fight, it is so critical that no one is left behind, particularly those who have been most severely impacted by the a pandemic has been, has been evident in the Black community and other communities of color with a substantially higher rates of hospitalization and death. We are all tired of this pandemic, but we do still need to use the measures in our COVID prevention toolkit that we know work right now. That includes use of masks, hand washing, and social distancing in our fight against this virus. At the same time, there does seem to be the promise of additional tools coming, perhaps uh, in the form of vaccines. And we know for many other infections, safe and effective vaccines have saved millions of lives each year. And vaccines have been a vital tool to keep us well from our youngest years. Being able to harness the power of vaccines that are both safe and effective, if those come to be, has the significant potential to change the horrible course of this pandemic and to put the immeasurable suffering and grief it has brought in the rearview mirror. Appreciably, as I have also thought about all of this time during this pandemic, there is a quote from Martin Luther King Jr. that I've reflected on through much of this, which states, we're all caught in an inescapable network of mutuality, tied in a single garment of destiny, Whatever affects one directly affects all indirectly. This virus has indeed shown us clearly that we are indeed all tightly connected and all in this together. If we jointly use all the tools at our disposal to combat this virus, we can rise above this pandemic together. In moving forward, we have the absolutely moral imperative to not leave anyone behind. Thank you.